the immediate impression is to say, no, you can't afford them. But when you look at Sweden, which has a third hour population and which has an incredibly strong aircraft industry, they have managed to establish a strong defense program, a stable plan, plan program, a very strong aircraft industry. And although they're in some difficulties now, they've done that for the last 20 or 30 years. So it simply is feasible if the planning and the purpose is there over a sufficiently long term. But it's a, I think it's a characteristic of Canada. We really haven't learned to capitalize on the genius that we're able to create from time to time in this country. We don't support research and development. We go so far and then back off. Canada can do it if it, if it wants to be in that kind of business, uh, if it wants to uh, build its economy, if it wants to develop that sense of commitment, then we have all the other resources that are, uh, that are available to do it. The manpower, the finance, uh, the marketing ability uh, is all there in a native sense. The end of the Arrow was to be the end of the company. It was also the end of Crawford Gordon. Sir Roy Dobson, wheeling and dealing to keep the company alive, fired the man he once thought of as a son and felt compelled to write a letter to John Diefenbaker to tell him so. It's addressed to the Right Honorable John G. Diefenbaker and begins, Dear Mr. Prime Minister, I sent word via Mr. Guest that I have asked for and received the resignation of Mr. Crawford Gordon as president of A.V. Rowe Canada Limited on the grounds that I was most dissatisfied with the way he has been working and with his actions, which could not be considered to be in the best interest of the company or the country. It's signed by Sir Roy H. Dobson, by Roy H. Dobson. Eight years later, Crawford Gordon died in New York. His friends said he drank himself to death. He could handle success, but not failure. And what of the other personalities in the Arrow story? After the cancellation, James Floyd moved back to Britain. In a distinguished career, he saw two of his airplanes, both of them pioneering ventures, both canceled. He is now retired, still working as a consultant in the aviation industry and still a Canadian citizen. Fred Smy bought an office equipment company, got tired of it, and in 1972 moved to Portugal. He is writing a book about Avro and the Arrow. He regards himself as being in voluntary exile. Jan Zurakowski retired a few months before the cancellation and now owns a fishing lodge in northeastern Ontario. The arrow is long dead, but the controversy lives on with its memory. People still argue its merits. Was it as good, as great as its supporters would have us believe? Here are three answers. If you mean by the arrow, uh, I take it a fighting uh, instrument of war, uh, which uh, must include an aircraft, an engine, and a sophisticated fire control system, then, of course, there never was an arrow in those terms. I think everybody will agree that is factual. But I think it's a mistake and gets people somewhat worked up in a way that they ought not to, to talk about the cancellation of this great Canadian achievement, when in fact it may very well have turned out to be a great achievement, but it seems to me that at the time it was cancelled, it was too soon to say whether the hopes that everyone held out for it were going to be realized or were not. The aircraft nowadays are maybe more sophisticated in this or that and better engines, better fuel consumption, better pressure recoveries. But there's nothing that I know of that would, even now, today, uh, be an improvement on that uh, maneuverability capability. It, it was absolute state of the art. It was a, a beautiful machine, and we probably would still be flying it today. In losing the arrow, we lost not only a symbol of national pride, we lost the technology and an immense pool of talent. 
there is one final question among the legacy of questions left by the death of the Arrow. To what extent did American interests influence the cancellation? The answer appears to be not at all. Although American space technology was the great beneficiary when the Arrow was killed, the United States did nothing to bring it about. They didn't have to. We did it all ourselves. Controls are behaving quite nice, nicely. I can see no oscillatory motions of any description in them. I think all this uh, immediate and the carriage effect, the whole derivation disappears. I think the carriage is making this. That's right. This is the side door which is making. The door which comes and closes the undercarriage in doing. It's hitting against the fuselage. Now. Fuel leaks, please, 201. The wind is northeast at 10, the altimeter is 02. 